Penicillin. I give you penicillin and no more. No, no, penicillin. Is the doctor in? Hello, my boys. What's all this? Oh, just getting rid of some rubbish. I'm leaving. So they drove me to the hospital. I could hardly believe it. True, nevertheless. Oh, Jacques, have you arranged about transport? Me argue with lying brother now, doctor. Get some drinks. Yes, doctor. But I thought you were going to carry on with your research here. I intended to. Then why? Lack of funds, my dear fellow. I say I'm terribly sorry. Things were going so well too, weren't they? Yes, I was on the point of success. I'm convinced that in a few years I'd have had a cure for certain types of flaxseed paralysis. Thanks. So, uh, they turned down your application for a grant? Yes. They're far too occupied with other things to bother about the fate of future generations. Eight shilling? Eight shilling is too much. No, I'll give you six. Millet, I'd give ten years of my life to get the money to enable me to carry on. At the rate you're driving yourself, Sartorius, you won't have ten years to give. Two years, then, if only I had the money. Well, what are you going to do? Jim Jim. I'm going to the French Riviera. My old friend, Dr. Bousquet, has promised to look me up a little practice there. The very thing. It's time you took it easy in your state of health. And who knows? Perhaps an opportunity may come. I hope so. Well, I must be getting back to the hospital. Good luck. Goodbye.
laboratory. Yes. It is the nurse, doctor. Show her up. We go up. Very well. This way. You really a long lady? Yes. As a matter of fact, I've been here some months, uh, attending a case. And my patient's just gone back to London. Ah, London. You English. <laughs> oh, yes. about the advertising box. Yes. My name is Will. Training? Thank you. And Dr. Booth here, he knows my work, said he telephoned to you. I know, I know. Start at once. Yes, Doctor. At the usual terms. Yes, Doctor. I'll go back to the pharmacy and get my uniform. My man will show you out. He's listening at the door. Jacques. Very lucky get the job. Even very clever doctor. Yes, I know. I've read a lot about him. Me with him. Long time. In Morocco. That's rather attractive, Yvonne. Going out again, dear? Yes, hairdressers, dressmakers, darling. Oh, I have so much to do, I don't know what to do first. I see. Oh, Sherry, I have been so worried about you that I've neglected everything else. And now, you see, I thought you were feeling so much better. No, I can't say that I do. Oh. But you mustn't keep your dressmaker waiting. Oh, that's right, dear. Oh, my sweet.
Surely you can persuade the old man to do something. Oh, there's no good, I tell you. It's terribly difficult. I must wait until he's in a better mood. You must think of something. In? Yes, madam. Uh, can I see him? I will inquire. Will you step in? Thank you. Lady Clifford, is it not? Yes. Please to see. Thank you. A moment. Lady Clifford, to see you, doctor. Lady Clifford? The wife of the cotton millionaire. Oh, yes. Ask her to come in. Yes, doctor. Will you come in, please? to consult you about myself. It's about my husband. I want your advice, Doctor. Did anyone mention my name to you? No. I read an article about you in the paper. It was about your work in Morocco. Oh. It said the unfortunate circumstances which uh, compelled you to leave your work there. It said that, did it? It's been very hard on you. Not many people interest themselves in my affairs, Lady Clifford. Well, frankly, Doctor, I do. Are you annoyed? Puzzle. There you go on. I hope that anything I tell you about... One moment. say in this room, Lady Clifford will go no further. The paper mentioned a certain experiment which, for financial reasons, you had to discontinue. Tell me, Doctor, what would it cost to enable you to finish your experiment? I want to do. To surround myself with the finest things in the world in the short time that I have left. I haven't very long to live, you know. Cost. Twenty thousand pounds. I am prepared to find that sum for you. You are sufficiently interested in science. No. I don't mind for science. I told you I wanted to consult you about my husband. It is my husband I'm interested in. Oh, Mary, please don't fuss. Oh, Charles, you might just as well be comfortable as not. Comfortable? Put to bed? We shall have you up in no time. If only Yvonne can persuade Dr. Sartorius to come here and take up your case. Isn't she back yet? How long is she going to be? Oh, Charles, do be reasonable. There's a lot to arrange. His fees, if he consents to come, and he's got to get someone to take up his breakfast. Fuss, fuss, nothing but fuss. Oh, sure. 20,000 pounds. Your opportunity, Doctor. It may not come again. What brought you to me? Your reputation. And your great need to carry out your life's work. Then you will not consider my proposition? On 
On the contrary. Morris, we're expecting him soon. Everything is quite ready, madam. Ah, thank you. You bail me to be going with the doctor on this job. A what is that? We will see. Yes, it's very nice of him to take me along. Taxi here, Jacques? Yes, doctor. Hmm. And Dr. Bousquet? Not yet, doctor. Ready, nurse? You intend to concentrate then on this one case, doctor? Yes, it interests me. An unusual case. It interests me intensely. May I come in? Dr. Bousquet. Mademoiselle Rowe? Madame, mon ami, here I am. I've recommended all my patients to you, Bousquet. Not very many of them, I'm afraid. Very kind of you all the same. I shall close up the house except for Jacques. Well, how are we? Ah, you work too hard. I must. Keeping well? Oh, yes. I hope you'll be as successful in your new case as you were in your life. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Examine him. I have. Will there be any risk? If there is, talking about it is not going to lessen. Oh, I only meant that. I think you can safely leave the patient to me. I understand that. That's a very pretty dress you're wearing, my dear. Miss Rose off duty now, dear. The night nurse will be on directly. Come along. Remember, you're to let me know the moment my boy arrives. Yes, but... Uh, I don't care how late it is. I want to see Roger. And the sooner the better. Oh, my darling. He's very determined. Yes. But I think he's very fond of his son. Hello, Charlie. Welcome back, sir. Glad to be back. Luggage in the car. Very good, sir. Hey. Hello, Aunt Mary. Roger. My dear. Well, I got you out. This is Mr. E. Rowe, the day nurse. How do you do? How do you do? How is the patient? Oh, getting on quite well. He's in very good hands. I'd love to see him. He's very anxious to see you. I'll ask the doctor. Such a charming girl. Thoroughly efficient. And a great favorite with your father. Good. I don't suppose he's the easiest of patients. I say, it's nothing serious, is it? Oh, we hope not, dear boy. But naturally, we're a little anxious. Mm. Mr. Clifford? Yes? The doctor says you may see him, oh, good. but you mustn't stay too long. Hello, Dad. Now, what's all this? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. What have you been doing? Goodness knows. I don't. And apparently nobody else does either. Devilish annoying being late with the heels like this. Then I'll leave you alone together. But mind, only for a few minutes. That woman shows me no mercy. <laughs> she bullies me. Why, look at her. Oh, there's no use. I'm not blind. Have you spoken to her? No. I didn't want to see. But she must be controlled. And I realize that now I'm ill. It's beyond me. Oh, rot, Father. Why in a little while? No. And so I have taken certain steps. In the first place, I have executed a power of attorney favor during my lifetime. You will act for me in all matters, business and domestic. And furthermore, I've made a new will, making you Yvonne's sole trustee. But Father, don't you think you'd better consider... I have considered well. At my death, you will have the sole disposition of my fortune. 
You will pay her the income I have directed. I have allowed her enough for one, not for two. Captain Holliday, that's uh, all right, Thomas. Good evening, Captain Holliday. Well, good evening, Miss Clifford. I've come to take Yvonne out to dinner. I don't suppose she's ready yet. As a matter of fact, I think for once she is. Oh, good. I'll go up. Very well, then. I'll do whatever you like if it leaves your mind. But I don't altogether relish the chop. It's not pleasant, I know. But it's necessary. It's only me, Arthur. Will you belong? Well, I think that's all. Right. I'm afraid time's up. That's all right. We've finished our talk. Good morning, my boy. Good night, Dad. Good night. Good night, Mr. Charles. Good night, my dear. Good evening, then. Good evening. That's the night, Ned. I must just go to the doctor and report that I'm off duty. I've come to report, Doctor. All right. The night nurse has taken over. Oh, and the, uh, the gong's just gone for dinner. I know, I know. Yes, Doctor. That night nurse seems a forbidding sort of creature. Well, she's very capable. Still, from what I hear, one doesn't have to be forbidding to be capable. Oh. Well, how do you think he's looking? Oh, pretty cheery, considering. He manages to keep his spirits up. Yes, yes, we're talking spirits. What about a cocktail now? Yes, do. Lady Clifford told me you were here. Well, you haven't forgotten me. No, I remember you. Your name is Holiday. The most interesting case. Too much of a narrow squeak for my liking. Still, I suppose these touch and go cases give you doctors no end of a thrill. sorry to have to go out in your first evening home. But uh, a previous appointment. Oh, that's all right. How are you, Roger? Very well, thanks. Still knocking about these parts, I see. Well, here, there's anyone else. He take pity on me. So kind. He take me out to dinner sometimes. <laughs> you will forgive me neglecting my duties as hostess tonight. Yes, of course. Ready? I wonder if you think me very rude if I ask to have my dinner in my own room. I'm in the middle of a most interesting experiment. Oh, of course. Yes. Uh, this is the child's son, Roger. He's just arrived. How do you do? How do you do? Give well, Doctor. I'm sure he couldn't be in better hands. Striking personality. Isn't it? being a wonderful night. So, what about driving down to the Splendide after dinner and dancing for an hour or two? Oh, I should not. Yes, dear. It would do you good. Oh, that's settled then, huh? I'm sure Charles would approve. Anywhere but the casino. <laughs> Can't you see I'm the picture of misery? <laughs> <laughs> what about a pint of something? <laughs> Aren't 
you ever serious? Well, it has been, no. <laughs> I was dead serious about one thing. Oh, what? When I asked him to come up with me tonight. Why? This is rather pleasant. <laughs> now tell me. Well, for one thing, I'm awfully glad you're looking after my government. Oh, I'm only second settled, really, to Dr. Satorius. Satorius, yes. He's a remarkable fellow. Seems to be completely wrapped up in his work, doesn't he? I think it's his whole life. Now, well, what are we going to have to drink? Oh, anything you like, only I mustn't be too late. I've got to be up early in the morning. Yes, of course you have. But we've just got time for half a bottle. Mm. And then we'll go. Waiter! I'm not altogether satisfied with the look of him, nurse. Everybody's in bed by now. You won't go abroad with that woman. Promise me. Darling, you don't think I want to go, do you? But I've got to have money. And unless you can find some, well, I can't throw away a chance like this. Arthur, be patient a little longer. Wait. What is there to wait for? It's quite clear your husband isn't going to relent. You can bet your life that son of his isn't going to help matters. It's pretty obvious he hasn't much time for you. No. He's always hated me. Well, then, don't you see? Oh, Arthur, don't speak about it any longer. Let's forget it. But promise me. Promise. Thanks for a lovely evening. Oh, the first of many of them. Oh, by the way, would you like a sandwich or a drink or something before you turn in? I'm going to have one. Chalmers always leaves something out for me in the other room. Well, no thanks. Well, good night. Good night. Very well. I promise. my invitation. Then he'll go at mine. Good night, Holiday. What? Roger, you can't. It may be no concern of mine what you do outside, but as long as you live under my father's roof, you'll observe the common decencies. Roger! By what right do you order people out of this house? I'm not going to argue about it. Get out. Look here, Clifford. Get out! You better go. Well, if it'll avoid a scene in front of Lady Clifford, it certainly will. Perhaps you will explain what you mean by ordering my friends out of my house. Now look here, Ivan. I'm not going to argue with you either. But while my father's ill, I'm going to make it my business to see that this sort of thing doesn't happen again. Indeed. Yes. And from now on, Holiday does not come inside this house. And suppose I do not choose to do as you say. What then? Then I shall be forced to tell my father all I know about you and Holiday. And you can be quite sure he'll divorce you. That's a threat, isn't it? Of course it's a threat. I see. I've known what's been going on for some time, and now it's got to stop. No, you dare to give me orders like this. I won't take them from you. You have no right. On the contrary, I have every right. Listen, you are his son, yes. But I am his wife. And I am the mistress in this house. I think not. What do you mean? I'd hoped to tell you this under pleasanter circumstances, but now you've forced my hand. In the future, it is what I say that goes in this house. You are mad. I shall speak to you, Father. I shall act. I can save you the trouble. 
My father has executed a power of attorney authorizing me to act for him in everything during his lifetime. What? Is this true? Perfectly. I don't believe it. It's a lie. I won't believe it. I will never submit to such a thing. Never, never, never. To take orders from you? No, never that. What is it you ask me, that lady? I just heard from Roger. You are treating me cruelly. You shall not do it. Please. Get out of my sight. This is not business of yours. Get out. I am your wife. I, I have given you the best years of my life. And you treat me like this. You place me in the power of your son who hates me. Who has always hated me. You shall not do it. Please come, quickly, quickly. I tell you once more, you shall not do it. I won't stand for it. Do you hear? syringe and a little bottle from my cupboard marked camphor. Yes, Doctor. I'm all right, Doctor. I'm used to these things, you know. Yes, but I think a stimulant. Take your hands off me, I tell you. Let me go. You won't leave this room until you behave yourself. I tell you what, Miguel, the name wants me. Yes. Yes, go. All of you, this is my room. I may need you. I will not be told by you what I shall do, what I shall not do. Shut that door. It is you who have put my husband in case. You hate me. You have always hated me. Be quiet, my father. I don't dare. Oh, I tell you what I think about you. I tell everyone. Just a 
just a cut. And as soon as I can, I'll get some iodine and dress it properly for you. But I must go upstairs now and see if I can be spared. Yes. Look after the old fellow. Oh, he's in good hands. Probably sleeping by now. Now you keep that hand there. That's right. Very well. Where's the syringe? Oh, yes, I remember. I gave it to Nurse Rowe. She's here, Doctor. And what took you away? Oh, uh, ra rather a bad cut. Your conduct is extremely unprofessional. I'm sorry, Doctor. Never mind that now. Where's the syringe? Syringe? It's the one I gave you just now. Oh, yes. I, uh, I must have put it down somewhere. Find it. Yes, Doctor. where I could have put it. You'd better try. Doctor, please. Call the family. Yes, Doctor. Oh, oh will you please go in? Nurse, you don't need please. Lady Clifford, the doctor says, will you please come? Very well. Tell Dr. Sartorius I would like to see him here. Very good, milady. But you must remember where you put it, nurse. I can't think. I... Then you must find it. Yes, doctor. Her ladyship says, would you be good enough to see her in the drawing room, doctor? Very well. searching for something I haven't laid. I say, you're looking a bit off color. And I feel it. Head splitting, my hands throbbing like blazes. Let me see it. Hmm. Rather puffy. I hope it's not going septic. I'm in the temperature, too. I think you'd better see the doctor. Oh, nonsense. I'll be all right presently. Anyway, I'd better have a look at it. All right. Oh, doctor, I wanted to tell you. I will let you have your check as soon as the necessary formalities are completed. It should only be a matter of a few days. Well, that'll suit me very well. I'd like to stay on for a day or two, to complete some rather interesting work that I've engaged. Certainly, by all means. Now, I don't want to alarm you, but I don't like the look of this at all. You keep quiet and try not to move that hand any more than you can help. All right. I say, I'm, I'm frightfully thirsty. Tell Chalmers to bring me up a brandy and soda, will you? Oh, I shouldn't advise that. I think I have some little avian water. At any rate, till the doctor's seen you. <laughs> Very well. Or you might find me some books or something. A magazine I was reading. Drawing room, I think. Of course I will. Thank you, Eve. Mr. 
Tell Miss take a bottle of Evian water up to Mr. Rogers' room, would you please? Very good, miss. Thank you. Well? Have you found it? I'm sorry, Doctor, but I seem to have looked everywhere. That's no answer. But, Doctor, I... Find it! But, but it's not a matter of... That's not the point. It's unprofessional. Find it! Find it! This is the last case you'll ever attend for me. Where did you put it? I... I don't know, Doctor. I shall be in my laboratory. I expect you to find it. yourself when the lawyer comes. In his new will, my father's appointed me your sole trustee. You mean that I have to come to you for everything? I'm afraid so. Your income will be paid by me as my father directed. Income? The capital is left in my hands. All checks must be signed by me. It's incredible! Wicked! Oh! That you mean you're treating me like a child! Perhaps you thought that was the best way to treat you. Ah, me faire ça, moi! I beg your pardon, my lady. Doctor, I must speak to you. What is it? What's the matter? He's cheated us. He's made a new will unknown to me. Roger has control of everything. I cannot so much as sign a check. What? Yes! Roger has been appointed sole trustee for life. I can't believe it. It's true. It will become a property when the will is read. What I've done, done for nothing. Young Clifford, you will have to take a hand in this. But what can I do? I've told you. I'll tell you what you can do. Everything I live for is within my grasp. And I'm not going to have it snatched away from me now. I want you to have the drugs in that syringe analyzed as soon as possible. Certainly, mademoiselle. They'll be ready at 4.30. Please send the report with the syringe to me. Nurse Rowe, the Villa Forenza. With pleasure, the mademoiselle. Thank you. Oh, nurse, her ladyship's been asking for you. She's in the boudoir. Oh, thank you. Lady Clifford? Yes. 
I shan't require your services any longer. You've been very satisfactory, nurse. As soon as you pack your things, you can go. Very good, Lady Clifford. Who is it? It is Duval, analytical candidate. Could I speak to Nurse Rowe? I have a report for her. A report? Yes, yes. It's all right, you can give it to me. Nurse Rowe is in my employ. I'm Dr. Sartorius. Oh, bonjour, doctor. We are sending you the syringe later. But I thought you ought to know the result of the analysis. It came earlier than we expected. Yes? Yes? Go ahead. You don't seem to be very much better, Mr. Roger. Really, I don't like the look of you at all. Why, well, I've never known you to be ill in all the years I've been with the family. I never have been. I feel absolutely limp. No, it's that hand, sir. Has the doctor seen it yet? No. The nurse said something about him coming up. That's good, sir. Bring me some more of that stuff, will you? Certainly, sir. I was going to. My throat's parched. Yes, yes. Many thanks. Sorry you're going, miss. Thank you, Chalmers. You've all been very kind to me. Hello? Hello, more I saw dirt. S'il vous plaît. holiday and drive me down to the chemist. It's most important. I'll get my hat. Wait a minute, Storius. This concerns you and Lady Clifford Whiter. What? You found it through? Yes, mademoiselle. Dr. Sartorius took the message. I gave him the formulae of the poison. Yes, mademoiselle, a very deadly poison.
leave the house till I come back. man I couldn't allow it. But doctor, can't you see that I'm very anxious about Miss Rowe? I must go out and find her. I'm just as anxious as you are to find out where Miss Rowe is. But doctor, please. Now, come with me. Just let me have a look at that man. Roger is ill. Yes, I'm afraid that's septic. A very simple injection will soon put it right. I'll just keep it covered till I come back. I'll get something for it. I'm so glad, dear. That's relieved my mind. The doctor will get me fit to go out tomorrow. I, I really am worried. Now then, we'll soon have you right. Yes, rather. There? Bed? There? 
No, that's all right. Hmm. Now for a little iodine. This won't hurt you. My dear Satoya, this young lady is very ill. Very ill indeed. She has told me the incredible story that you the girl is obviously overwrought. I may be. But what I'm telling you is true, Roger. He's trying to murder you just as he murdered your father. What are you saying? It's true, I tell you. I had the few drops left in the syringe to use analyzed. They found poison. He knew it. That's why he tried to kill me. If I hadn't replaced the poison with water, he'd have succeeded. And now he's trying to kill you. But, but why should he want to kill me? I don't know. Except that you stand in his way just as I did. That syringe contains poison. These are the ravings of a maniac. There is a very simple way of quashing the ridiculous suggestion that there is poison in that syringe. Now, you allow me for your own satisfaction to analyze the contents. That will settle the matter once and for all. He can do it. He can. But of course, my dear Busquet. Oh, but wait. <laughs> 